And shalom, 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 everybody. Shalom. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. And um, shalom on this Sabbat. Uh, yes. Forgive us if our voice is scratchy or kind of off a little bit. Things going around and Nabi and I just so happen to get it. Um, but listen. We just got over it. <laughs> yes, the most high is good. He is great. Well, today um, we had some interesting conversations, uh, whether it be last month and a few this month. And, and it kind of threw us off track. And we had some questions from some viewers and some emails on some viewers about hell that they really didn't believe in it. It didn't exist or, I mean, I was thrown backwards about some of the things that, you know, some of the things that we read there. So what we decided to do, I know we presented this a long time ago on, on hell doesn't exist. You know, it's, it's funny that, Navia people will be believe in heaven. They'll believe in the good, but don't believe in the bad. Mm -hmm. And even some people believe that, you know, the, the bad gets the same reward as the good. Not true. So to clear a lot of the questions up, to clear a lot of the things up, we're not going to clear it up. The word is going to clear it up today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you didn't catch it, Today, we're going to talk about hell. Mm -hmm. Is it real? Is it eternal? Does it exist? Mm -hmm. Because we had a lot of questions just out of the blue. I mean, even uh, out of town, you know, we hear things like mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. And why would God do this and that? Well, this is why. The wicked is not going to have the same reward. Mm -hmm. All right. Good is is in reference in accordance to righteous. Right. right. That's what that's that's the good part about it. So without further ado, I think we need to get right on in here and clear this part up. So if you one of those persons that's being deceived mm -hmm. by the enemy mm -hmm. and he's telling you that it doesn't exist and good works get you in and this and that and the other, uh uh tune in. Tune in to this one right here. And pay attention to the precepts. So mm -hmm. without further ado, let's get in our Shema. Yes. This is what they did before the Bible studies. Back then in the synagogues, they said a prayer. And then they had their lesson and they ended it with a benediction with another prayer. Okay. So if you will, stretch your hands and get ready to receive the word. Shema, Yasharala, Ahaya, Alahaya, Nawa, Ahaya, Akam. Here, O Yashael. Yahuwah Elohenu, Yahuwah is one. Abanawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodesh Haya Shemka, Haya Malakbutka, Taba'a, Ratazam Wanka, Haya Isha, Ba Arataza, Hawa, Haya Ba Shemayim, Latan La Nawa, Latam Ha Wayam, Watsalik Nawa, Tawath Ya Nawa, Wasalak Nawa, Tawath Ya Nawa, Walaa, Abana Nawa, Hanas Owayam, Abal Hawash Nawa, Manra Kaya Lakta Ha Malakwa, Waha Allah, Waha Ta Palath, La Alanyam, Aman. Amen. And so be it. So, diving right in. They say, there's no hell. They say, it's not real. They say it's not eternal. Well, we're going to take a look at a few slides today, and we're going to tell you otherwise. Stop listening to the enemy. Asatan is very deceiving. You know, he wants to keep you in that state or keep your ears not opening and listening for the truth. To my old Israel. Yes, sir. Yahuwah Eloheinu. Is one. All right. So let's get right into our lesson today, brothers and sisters. We don't want to make it long anymore. We try to keep it short and to a point here. So Glory Light Ministries presents hell. Does it exist? 
Is it real? Is it eternal? Once again, you can reach us at um, www.glorylightministries.info. And that's the email, or you can reach us, you know, down the link below the description. Shoot us a, uh, you know, if you got a question or you got something that you're wondering about, hey, give us a shout out and we'll be sure to, um, you know, answer the question as soon as possible. All right. So today, Glory Light Ministries, we present hell. Does it exist? Is it real? Is it eternal? Anything you want to add there, Nabi? Mm -hmm. no, before we get in that was the um imp dot info is the website that's the website mm -hmm. that's right glory light 684 at gmail.com is, is the, the email. email that's right all right so let's get right into the introduction all right and we're not going to even play around with the pre-sales we're going to jump right into them and let's see what the word says about hell for those that don't believe in it for those that don't you know, don't think that it's real. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't think it's eternal, this video, this presentation, this Bible study is for you because it's not what we say. Mm -hmm. It's what the words say. So let's introduce ourselves to hell and see what the Bible says. All right. The Bible speaks of the reality of hell in the same term as the reality of heaven. Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. All right, we're going to come back to that precept, but let's finish reading this introduction here. Yahushua spent more time warning the people about the dangers of hell than he did in comforting them with the hope of heaven. The concept of a real, conscious, forever and ever existence in hell is just as biblical as a real conscious forever and ever existence in heaven. Despite the Bible's clear teaching on both heaven and hell, it is not unusual for people to believe in the reality of heaven while rejecting the reality of hell. And this is true because this is some of the feedback that we've gotten last month to even pause this Bible study day. All right, so let's turn to Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to give everybody a chance to grab their Bibles because this is what it's all about. This features the Bible, Bible study. Let's see what the word says. Turn to Revelation chapter 20, uh, verses 14 and 15. Now, of course, um, Navia is going to read it out of the GNT, and I'm going to highlight it here for you. All right, so let's read Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. All right, then read. death and the world of the dead were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. Those who did not have their name written in the book of the living were thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so now, as you can see right here, now we're going to get into the different names and the different types. Mm -hmm in the different areas of hell, a.k.a. Hades, because if you see right here, death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So now, let's go back over here to our commentary here. So now, Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, it speaks of Hades. Now, in some precepts, in some scriptures, it actually uses the word hell. But hell has different terms, mm -hmm. different translations, different trans transliterations. You see what I mean? So today we're going to study about hell and the different translations and transliterations and the way you can put it in and what it can mean this and that and the other. All right. It's still a reality. It still exists, and it's still eternal. So the answer to those three questions, we just answered them mm -hmm. already. All right? It does but, exist. Exactly. Is it, it is eternal. And we're going to break it so down it and show exists. you why. For those that accept heaven and don't accept hell. You know, it's, it's, 
I don't understand the, the, the way of thinking. It's understandable because I know it's deceiving. All right, so let's go to the next slide here. Now, some more of the introduction. The Bible says that Yah created hell for Satan and the wicked angels mm -hmm. who rebelled against him. But there are people in hell. Also, Matthew 25 and 41. They are people in hell. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. So you say hell doesn't exist. Matthew 25 and verse 41, read. Then he will say to those on his left, away from me, you that are under God's curse, away to the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. All right. So there, therefore, guess what? We already then, 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 then found two different translations, eternal fire and so far Hades. So take a pen, brothers and sisters, and write those two down, all right? Both angelic beings and human beings are in hell for the same reason, sin. Romans 6 and 23. Now, we don't have to even turn to that one because we know the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Let's pull up the precept. Go ahead, Nabi. Romans chapter 6. Verses 23. Mm -hmm. Let's read. Okay. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. 23 says, for, the, for, for sin pays its wage, death, but God's free gift is eternal life, is union with Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yah is eternal life in Christ our Lord. You see, so just as there's an eternal gift that Christ is going to give you, mm -hmm. the, the righteous, when he returned, what do you think the eternal gift going to be for the wicked? Mm -hmm. So you can't have bad without good. You can't have righteous without wicked because if it was no wicked you wouldn't know what righteous was mm -hmm. so just as there was no comparisons no right no comparison no comparison thank you Nabia so you see how the most high Yah do he he gives us the difference because mm -hmm. it's just like saying if there was no up you would know what down down is. was right you know and so it's just he has to have an opposition. Opposition's always it, it, it existed. You know, just as well as there's water, there's home. You That's know, right. there's a up, there's a down. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a, a right, there's a left. There's a right, there's a left. There's a right, there's a left. There's man, there's woman. Right. You know, it's just what it is. It is what it is. And, you know, and you're being him, deceived. There's a heaven. It sure is. A you're being a deceived if you're thinking that there's not. Mm -hmm. And then some people may say, well, what type of God is this that'll have you burning and da-da-da-da-da forever and this and that and the other? Well, what type of God is he that gave that has given you so many opportunities after so many opportunities to get it right? Right, choices. He didn't possess you. He didn't control you. He gave you free will. Free will. To choose. To choose. The right and, thing. And you have to choose. You have to choose. You have to choose, brothers and sisters. So, does hell exist? Is it eternal? Is it real? So, Romans 6 and 23 shows us that the wages of sin is death. If you go back to Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, it tells you the eternal fire well go back to the last screen Matthew 25 and 41 it tells us that there's people there but it wasn't made for us until people do wicked things mm -hmm. 
Interesting. If you're a wicked individual, then and you rebel and against Yah, doing what he tells us not to do, there's a place for you and it's called hell. Eternal fire. Second death. You see? Hades. This is the, these are the couple of words that we found out already through the Bible study, just flipping two or three precepts. Mm -hmm. All right, let's finish it up here. Because Yah is completely righteous and morally perfect. Psalms 18 and 30. He always does what is right. There is no darkness in Yah, not the smallest speck in perfection. 1 John 1 and 5. Used to carve faces on the biggest turnips of light and putting them inside. I think this is something that uh, I didn't mean to put that in there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it says, let's go to Psalms chapter 18 and verse 30. All right. Mm -hmm. It says, because Yah is completely righteous and morally perfect. All right. You got it there? Namia, yes. go ahead, read. It says, this Yah. How perfect are your are his deeds? How dependable his words. He is like a shield for all who seek his protection. Exactly. So the question is, brothers and sisters, that I ask you today, can you truly say you seek in Yah's protection? Now, if we know we live in the end, and you know if you woke up this morning. Hold on your back, still in your right mind. Now is the time to repent. Mm -hmm. And you ask him, protect me from this place. All right? We got a lot of literature to break down today on hell. Hades. There's different types. It's different names. It's different ways that you insert it in the scripture that gives a different translation or a different understanding. But the bottom line is, are you accepting righteousness to make it into the kingdom? Or are you a wicked person and this is your eternal place, hell? I mean, it's no in between. You're not gonna just flow. You're not gonna be spreading no fences. No. It's going to be hell or heaven. That's it. That's it. When Ezra, as you can remember, we broke down Ezra. He went to Uriel. Well, actually, he went to the Most High, and the Most High sent Uriel. If you can remember the breakdown we did on Ezra, the how important he was, and he didn't stop fasting and praying until he got an answer. And Uriel came back with the answer. That's only two places. There's a place of rest, and there's a place of torment. Torment, rest and torment. Uriel didn't say nothing about, uh, it, it's a, a place called purgatory, and this is where you sit, and you just sit there. Or you die, and your body go there, and your soul and your spirit just bounce back and forth. No. Place of torment and a place of rest. Mm -hmm. One is the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. and the other one is hell hades sheol the grave all of that all right so now let's move on to the bot through the bible study here so now because yah is completely righteous and morally perfect psalms 18 and 30 he always does what is right mm -hmm. there is no darkness in yah not the smallest speck of imperfection Mm -hmm. You see, so when you ask the question, why would a God do so and so and so and this and that and yeah? not a speck of imperfection. He always does what is right. So let's read that. Now be first John chapter one and verse five. It says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto, unto you that Elohim is light. And in him is no darkness at all. So there can't be any evil. There's no darkness. This is the message which we have heard from him. 
and declare to you that Yah is light and in him is no darkness. So there's the opposition that Nabia was talking about, light and darkness. Mm -hmm. It refers to heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. Good, evil, light, darkness, righteous, wickedness. And each one of these light and darkness, they have a home. Okay? Let's move forward. Anything you want to add there, Nabi? I don't know. It's just, op you know, where there, there is always opposition. If there's a day, there's a night. Mm -hmm. There's a light, there's a darkness. There's a good, there's an evil. There's a hell, there's a heaven. You see? So let's not be deceived, brothers and sisters. You know, Hasatan, you know, he may say, well, you know, you, you ain't did that wrong. You, you're a good person. Mm. But if you don't seek first the kingdom and after Yah's righteousness, you can't have all these things added to you. And wisdom is one of you, one of them. So what are you going to listen to? Anything. Mm -hmm. Any and everything. Mm -hmm. And you're going to fall for any and everything. everything. The Bible tells us to be not deceived. You see? So that's, that's, that's what I, I don't understand. You know, when I was getting this feedback and these comments that this was just on topic that we hadn't even talked about. And to say there's no hell, it, it, it just threw me for a loop. Mm -hmm. And I knew then that that was probably the Holy Spirit letting us know that we need to do another mm -hmm. Bible study <laughs> in more detail on hell. All right, moving forward here. So, there's no, in Yah, not the smallest speck of imperfection. There's not one. He don't make mistakes. None. So now let's get into the definition of hell. Number one, it says, a place regarded in various religions as a spiritual realm of hell, evil, I'm sorry, and suffering, often traditionally depicted as a place of perpetual fire, Beneath the earth, where the wicked are punished after death. Now, this came out of Wikipedia. All right? So, number two, the place or state of punishment of the wicked after death, the abode of evil and condemned spirits, Diana or Tartarus. So, as you can see, there's another little hint of two more places that is called hell. Diana and Tartarus, all right? So number one definition, a place regarded in various religions as a spiritual realm of evil and suffering, often traditionally predicted as a place of perpetual fire beneath the earth where the wicked are punished after death. And that's both spirit beings mm -hmm. and human beings because we, we pulled that up in the first slide there. And uh, was it Revelation chapter 20? Okay, maybe it was this one right here. I think it was in John, wasn't it? Okay, it was Matthew 20. 25 and 41, as you can see. But it was not created for mankind. In the beginning. It was just created for Satan and his demons. All right? So now, those are the definitions, and we picked up two other words, Guyana mm -hmm. and Tartarus. The third definition, in its <clears throat> archaic sense, the term hell refers to the underworld or deep pit or distant land of shadows where the dead are gathered. From the underworld come dreams, ghosts, and demons, and in its most terrible precinct, sinners pay the penalty for their crimes. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 and 23. Mm -hmm. Definition number four. O English hell, hilly, netherworld, abode of the dead, infernal regions, place of torment for the wicked after death. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So see, that's one of the choices. A place of Torment. For the wicked. For the wicked after, after death. death. Now, this, these definitions are the definitions from Wikipedia. You see? Next slide. 
Let's take a break here, as we always do. And let's take a look at this video called Why Hell Exists. It's just a clip from um, Desiring God, Acts Pastor John. Fair use, brothers and sisters. Pay attention to this one here. Why has God determined it appropriate to establish an eternal, unending judgment? And what is the one main sin it is designed to punish? And how are we all made so guilty that this punishment is appropriate and fitting for every human being who is separated from Christ? It's into this very heavy but essential question we find the answer in Romans chapter 1. The following clip is from a sermon John Piper delivered last year in England at Revive a weekend conference of the Commission Church Planning Network. Here's what Pastor John had to say. We we never, we never leave God because we value Him little. We also exchange God because we value something else more. Let me say that again. Nobody leaves God, forsakes God, abandons God, suppresses God, turns away from God, simply because they value him little. We always turn away from God because we value something else more, which is why it is such a cosmic insult and infinite outrage. This is the infinite outrage in the universe, that human beings prefer something else to God. So here we are at verse 22. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and here it comes. They exchanged the glory of God, the immortal God, for images. They became fools and exchanged the glory of God for images. Now just think that through, because you've all done it, and we're tempted to do it every day. To exchange something for something means to express a preference, right? You don't exchange something you value supremely for something you value less. Never. You always exchange something for something that you want instead of it. You don't want that. You you want the other thing. That's what exchange means. I want the other thing. And everybody does that with God. We look at His glory. We look at his power, we look at his wisdom, we look at his beneficence, and we don't say thank you, we don't say you're great, we say, I am going to trade you for something that I really want. That is why hell exists, because it is an infinite sin. You can't do anything worse. There's nothing worse that can be done. Sins are simply expressions of that. Sins get all of their evil from that. That's evil. What we call evil, hurting each other, that's just little, little expressions of that. All the rottenness that we do to each other is deriving its rottenness from the ultimate rot of exchanging God, saying that the infinite creator And the most beautiful reality in the universe, I don't want you, I don't prefer you, you're not attractive to me, you're not satisfying to me, I get no pleasure from you, this is my desire, this is my treasure. That is evil, that's the meaning of evil. And all other evils get their evil from that, including the evils of money, sex, and power, which Paul is going to make crystal clear The deepest problem that we're dealing with behind money, behind sex, and behind power is that we all know the supreme value of God. We do. Everybody does. Everybody you'll ever talk to, atheist, skeptic, agnostic, secularist, new age, whatever religion, everybody knows the truth. Namely, God is supremely valuable. And everybody prefers something to God. Adam and Eve thought they were doing a wise thing when they preferred 
their way and this fruit over God and his way. And they became fools and were darkened in their understanding. And we've inherited that all the way down to the roots of our being. There are two kinds of heart condition in the world. The one that values God over all and the one that values something else over all. The, the, the main issue you're going to be facing as we are meeting together here is whether your hearts are treasuring God supremely above everything else. I mean everything evil and everything good. All the good things God has given you, all the evil things the, the devil is tempting you with. And I'm saying that more than the good things and more than the evil things, is God your treasure? Is God your satisfaction? Is God your delight? Because if he, if he is, money, sex, and power will turn into remarkable potentials in your life. And if he's not, money, sex, and power will become unbelievably destructive in your hands. Wow, that is powerful. Uh, this message was delivered last summer in a serious time. So now, brothers and sisters, the reason why I put this clip in here is because I wanted you to, to, to see something. Why hell exists. And Pastor John was taking it out of um, Romans chapter 1. I don't know if he was following or not, but take a turn with me here to Romans chapter 1. And let's start at verse 18. I'm going to read it to you here out of the NKJV. All right, it says, For the wrath of Yah is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. So remember that place of torment and that place of rest. So when, when Pastor John said, um, you didn't, you stopped desiring Yah. And you started replace him with other things. That's wicked. Now, let me read this to you. Verse number 19. Because what may be known of Yah is manifest in them, for Yah has shown it to them. From since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So there's not going to be an excuse on judgment day between the heaven and the hell, because either he's had a person to come your way, he's had you to come across a video, he's had someone to maybe sit down and explain it to you, mm -hmm. whether it be a family member, a pastor, an elder, whatever. Mm -hmm. And for you to say there's no hell, it doesn't exist, it's not eternal, it's not real, you can't use it. And here, the, here it is right here, that they are without excuse, because although they knew Yah, they did not glorify him as Yah, nor were thankful, but became fruitful in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. See, the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. Follow me here. Verse number 22, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible Yah into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, Yah also gave them up to uncleanness mm -hmm. in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of Yah for the lie. See the opposition, truth and lie. Thank you. And worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who, who is blessed forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep reading here. Verse 26. For this reason, Yah gave them up to vile passions, for th even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts for one another. Men and women committing 
what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which is due. See, now this is, this is what I'm saying. If you follow me here, when it says the woman gave up the natural. So you believe in, if you can believe that there's not a hell, then I'll continue to stay in this state and practice this homosexuality or do this, which is vile, or do that, which is vile, or do this, or lust over that, or replace Yah <clears throat> with something else. Because you don't believe that there's a hell. You don't believe that it's real, and you don't believe that's it, that it's eternal. Mm -hmm. So what all the- kind of other stuff will come in. Exactly. And you'll start believing all kind of other lies. It's like a starting point, huh? Exactly. Wow. So what I encourage you to do, brothers and sisters, if you don't mind, I'm going to finish reading this here, right here. Verse 28. And even as they did not like the re like to retain mm -hmm. God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to those things which are not fitting, mm -hmm. being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So this is a person that don't believe in hell. Brothers and sisters, hear me now. There is a place. Believe it or not. When that time comes, and if your destiny is there, it's going to be too late to do anything about it mm -hmm. or believe it. Because you're going to be living the belief. Yeah, your disbelief. Thank you. Love you. I mean, living in your disbelief. And you don't want that. And neither do we. So this is Yah's wrath on unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So there's the opposition. And you say there's not a hell. So the thing is, do you think the righteous man going to go to the place of torment? Do you think the unrighteous man going to go to the place of rest? Mm -mm. Doesn't work that way. Today, we're going to help who's ever thinking. And this video is for the people that wrote in. The, the few people that did blew me away. Said there's no such of a place. And it says, uh, this is hell. Right here on earth. No. Not the same. All right? I challenge you, brothers and sisters, to turn your Bible to Romans chapter 1 and read verses 18 to the end of the chapter. Mm -hmm. To 32. Just read it all. Read it all. <laughs> Forgive me. It's going to explain to you why, you know, <laughs> For these type of people. So the human beings that's there, this is what they're into. And this is what got them there. So if you dabbling with any of these things on the list, repent, turn, and change. Teshuvah in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. That means to repent. That was unscripted. Mm -hmm. But I know the Holy Spirit is here in the studio with us. And he allowed this to be read today. Let's move forward with the Bible study here. All right, so next screen. Romans chapter one. And this is why hell exists. Verses 18 through 32. So now let's get into the different names of hell in the Bible. All right, number one, Sheol. The grave. Psalms chapter 16. Uh, verse 10 in KJV. Okay. Psalms 16, 
the reason why I did it like this, because it used certain translations here. Mm -hmm. All right. Psalms chapter 16, verse 10. I got that one. Okay. Psalm 16 and verse 10. She opened. All right. Here we go. Chapter 16 and verse 10. And it reads. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. So here's the translation of Sheol. Let's see what I got pulled up here. Hey, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. In KJV, you'll find the translation of hell. Theo, sometime meaning the grave. Okay? Now, let's go to number two. The common word of hell in the Old Testament is Sheol, which means the grave. Hebrew 6900. Blue letter Bible. Let's listen up. Strong's H, 6913. Kever. 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 <laughs> Grave. Sepulchre. Mm. Tomb. Okay? Sheol. Hebrea. All right? Number two. We saw this one mm -hmm. in Revelation chapter 20. Please. Luke verses six, chapter 16, verse 19 through 20. Oh, GNT. <laughs> GNT. So let's take a look at the blue letter Bible here. The BLB. Let's get the translation while Nabi is pulling up here. Take a listen. Strong's G86. Hades. 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 Thayer's lexicon. Hades. 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 And as you can see, Number three, later use of the word, the grave, death, and hell. Mm -hmm. Hades. All right, so let's go back to the scripture here. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 20. Okay. All right, read. It talks about the rich man and the poor man. Yes. It says, there was once a rich man who dressed in the most expensive clothes and lived in great luxury every day. There was also a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who used to be brought to the rich man's door, hoping to eat bits of food that fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the feast in heaven. The rich man died and was buried and in Hades, where he was in great pain, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. So he called out, Father Abraham, take pity on me and send Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and cool off my tongue, because I'm in great pain in this fire. But Abraham said, remember, my son, that in your lifetime, you were given all the good things while Lazarus got all the bad things. But now he is enjoying himself here while you are in pain. Mm. Besides all that, there is a deep pit lying between us so that those who want to cross over from here to you can't not do so. Nor can anyone cross over to us from where you are. All right. Now, brothers and sisters, what I want to get now, is there a place? So hell is also called Hades, right here. Mm -hmm. There it is. There it goes. Hades. It's another place. Or, uh, what, what did they, let's pronounce it again, H H H Hades. And there was a, there are the two places right there mm -hmm. in the scripture. You have in the same place, mm -hmm. Abraham Bosom. Come on, follow with me. In yes. the same place, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Hades, the underworld, 
where every soul goes when it dies. Either the place of torment, the gulf, or the place of rest. You see? Now, as the poor man was in Abraham's bosom, place of rest. resting, he could look over there and see the rich man being tormented in the what? The no. fire. Mm -hmm. Place of torment. And you say there's not a hell? Well, why would, why would they make the comparison right here in Luke? All right. The rich man went to Hades at death and was tormented in flames. The punishment in Hades is burning, separation and loneliness, conviction by memory, thirst, falling, and stint. The rich man could look across a great gulf and see where the saved were located. However, the scripture is silent whether the saved could see the torment of the unsaved. One thing they saw was the flame. The one thing the rich man could not do was escape the torment. He could not even send a warning to his family. There is a place, brothers and sisters. And in this translation, in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 26, it, it explains the same thing that Ezra saw. The same thing. In uh, Ezra 4, I think uh, verses chapter 75, in the um, Apocrypha, mm -hmm. the conversation between Uriel and Ezra, he talked about Hades, Bill, the place of torment of rest. And here it is right here, that great gulf in between. Now, number three. Second Chronicles chapter 28, verses one through four in KJV. Guyana. One moment here. Second Chronicles chapter 28, one through four. This is a little bit too close to the top. Second Chronicles chapter 28, mm -hmm. one through four. In KJV, let me turn to it here. Okay. One moment, brother and sister. Well, I have it in the NIV, but I'll, you'd rather have it in the KJV. Yeah, you, you, can, you can read it there, Diana. You go ahead and read it there. Okay. So it says... 28, um, 1 through 4. Go ahead. 28, 1 through 4. It says... Um, Ahaz. 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 Uh, became king at the age of 20, and he ruled in Jerusalem for 16 years. He did not follow the good example of his ancestor, King David. Instead, he did what was not pleasing to the Lord and followed the example of the kings of Israel. He had metal images of Baal made, burned incense in Hainan Valley, and even sacrificed his own sons as burnt offerings mm -hmm. to idols, imitating, mm -hmm. uh, imitating the disgusting practice of the people whom the Lord had driven out of the land as the Israelites advanced at the, at the, at the pagan places of worship on the hills and under every shady tree, Ahaz offered sacrifices and burned incense. Okay, brothers and sisters, this is the story of, of, of King Ahab when he first became king. And back in the back in the day, there was a place, the Hinnon Valley, there in Jerusalem, the south side of Jerusalem, is where they burnt the trash. So basically, 
it was always a flame. All right. They call this part of Hades or this part of hell. There is a part in hell called Guyana. Stink real bad, filthy, smelly, stenchy, right? So this was also the place, if you can remember, where, you know, the Israelites, they took their children to be sacrificed and get burned in the flame and sacrifice them to Moloch. You see, so Guyana is another name of hell. And it also symbolized a place south of Jerusalem on the south side of town where they burnt all the trash. So let's read the commentary here. One moment. The word appears only 12 times in the New Testament and is translated hell. The name is probably related to the Valley of Hinnom, what Navia just read, during the reign of Ahaz. Israel participated in the worship of the false god Moloch. Yah used the word Guiana to describe the place of eternal punishment because it was a place of filth and stench, a place of smoke and pain, and a place of fire and death. So you had all of these things. You had filth and stench from the garbage. You had smoke and pain from sacrificing the babies on the altar to Moloch, and then fire and death is how they died and how they were killed and sacrificed through the fire. So now real quick, let's take a little break. Another one here. And for those who haven't seen this, it's a lot of people that has tuned into this and have heard about this, but it's some that have it. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first heard it, it shook me up. Exactly. So these are the, the, the screens recorded at the longest borehole. I think they did it over in, uh, Siberia, somewhere in Russia, okay. almost nine miles down, nine miles, brothers and sisters, maybe seven and a half to nine. I can't remember. I think it's between seven and a half to nine miles deep. This borehole went and they put a special microphone down in this hole. And this is what they heard. Viewer discretion advised here, brothers and sisters, if you have not heard these screams, they're bone shattering. And it's life changing because everything that we're reading about, the story of the rich man and poor man, well, this is down in the earth. And this is what they picked up. All right. So listen up. Viewer discretion advised, brothers and sisters. First of all, I want to say this. Nine miles, that's it? And they heard that. So the only thing that's, that's, that's separating us from, we walking on the earth right now, right? But nine miles is not that far. And this is what you hear. And this is what you can get involved with. That's awfully close. Listen up, brothers and sisters. 1970. The Soviet Union drilled a hole more than 12 kilometers deep in Siberia, which shares borders with Norway and Finland. The project to drill into the Earth's surface began in the 1970s, when Soviet scientists wanted to learn more about the Earth's crust. Over two decades, they managed to dig more than 7.5 miles down into the Earth. The drill broke through into a cavity, and the scientists lowered some equipment to see what was down there. An extremely heat-tolerant microphone, along with other sensory equipment, were lowered into the well. The temperature was about 1,100 degrees centigrade, about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But the real shocker was the disturbing sound that was recorded. They only got about 17 seconds of audio before the microphone melted, but it was 17 horrifying seconds of the screams of the damned. The screams of the hell.
gapped it off. It's still there. First of all, the first one, the first uh, measurement I had was right. You can walk seven and a half miles in maybe a couple of hours. And that's how close this is. You can't make this up, brothers and sisters. First of all, the Bible already speaks of it. So do you think that was made up? How can it be when the Bible already says it's there? Seven and a half miles down, they hit a cavern. A cavern is an opening. Absolutely mind-blowing. Moving forward. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with the hole to hell. These were the screams that they picked up on the microphone before it melted. Place of torment. Now, where do we go when we die? I'm going to cue this up probably around nine minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to stop it right before he segmented into a different, a different topic. All right. So mm -hmm. fair use here. Let's take a look at the explanation. This is another, the rich man, poor man, another right. description of, of where this place is. Nothing's up, brothers and sisters. The soul goes down. The body goes in the ground. It deteriorates. That's it. Your soul is the one that gets judged. And it goes to one or the other. Listen up. Here we go. Part of this journey. The entire second section of this chart comprises what is known as Hades. This is the Hadean realm. Now, many people are confused by the term Hades because they think of Hades as referring to hell. They think of it as referring to the place of punishment. And that's not right. The word Hades actually refers to the dwelling place of the dead. It's kind of a, a holding area for disembodied spirits. The good who die go to Hades. The bad. See the difference in the translations? That's why he wants y'all to see this. You see, this is why I, I, I want, you know, to present this video because it's a good explanation. You can see the Hadean rim. Well, that's where everybody goes. Pay attention here. Bad who die go to Hades. I think part of the reason why we're confused about this is because the King James Version translates the Greek word for Hades as hell. And that confuses us. In the original language, there are two different words. The two different words. There are different words. There's one word for Hades and one word for Gehenna. Now, Hades is the dwelling place of the dead. Gehenna is hell. But the King James translates both words as hell. In Matthew 16, 18, when Jesus promised to build His church and He said the gates of hell would not prevail against it, this is, this is not hell. This is the word for Hades. It means that death would not prevent. Death would not stop his kingdom. Now, if you don't understand the distinction in these words, you're going to get very confused. Now, incidentally, just as a side note, the Old Testament word for Hades, the Hebrew word for Hades, is the word Sheol. Sheol and Hades refer to the same place. And so, once you understand that all people go to Hades when they die, it's going to clear up some things for you. For example, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 31, the Bible refers to Christ after His death as being in Hades. Now, the King James Version says hell, but the word there refers to Hades. Jesus did not go to hell when He died. He went to the Hadean realm, to Hades. But Luke 23, 43, as Christ was about to die, He said He was going to go to paradise. Now, when you understand that paradise is in Hades, it all makes perfect sense because paradise is a compartment of Hades. In Hades, 
there is a place where the righteous go, and there is a place. This is the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus and the rich man. Mm -hmm. Now, Lazarus could see across the great thick gulf and see the rich man being tormented in flames. Let's continue. Where the wicked go, they're all awaiting the day of judgment. Now, the best description that we have in the Bible of Hades is in Luke chapter 16. It describes both compartments. Now, I want us to read it together. Let's look at it together and then we'll discuss it. Luke chapter 16, beginning in verse 19. The Bible says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torments, in Hades. Now the King James uses the word hell. It, it says that he was in hell, but that's not right. The New King James correctly says that he was in Hades. Being in Hades, he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And then he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all of this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Now, I want us first to look at this place where Lazarus was taken. We're told that when he died, when Lazarus died, he was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Now, this is the compartment of Hades where the righteous go to await judgment. It's the place known as paradise. This is the same place that Christ promised the thief on the cross that he would go. Remember he said in Luke 23, 43, Assuredly I say to you that you will be with me in paradise. In Luke 16, 25, the Bible tells us that in this place the righteous are comforted. In fact, if you study the background, the etymology of the word paradise, it carries with it the idea of a pleasure garden. Now the opposite compartment of Hades is where the rich man went. This place is a place of torment. Now this section of Hades is called Tartarus in the original Greek. Peter uses this word in 2 Peter 2 and verse 4 when he said, For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. They are waiting for the judgment day. Now, this place is described for us in Luke 16, verses 22 and 23, this way. Verse 22 says, The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23, listen to this, And in hell, the King James says hell, the word is Hades, and in Hades he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Now, normally when I teach on this subject, I would spend some time here talking about the misery and the suffering of this place. And we could spend an entire lesson just on that subject. But for now, let's briefly observe that this rich man in torment is burning in fire. He is crying out for, uh, for mercy. He's begging for mercy. He believes that a, a mere drop of water would bring him at least a moment's relief. And I want you to appreciate with me that every person from the beginning of this world until now, every person who has died lost in the eyes of God is in this place. Many of them have been there for thousands of years, many just for minutes, some for seconds. But they're there and they're suffering. Now, another observation that I want us to notice is the fact that there is consciousness in the Hadean realm. You know, there is a doctrine taught by some in the religious world called soul sleeping. And soul sleeping suggests that when a person dies that he goes into a state of unconsciousness and he ceases to be aware. But this passage, as, as well as others, teach us that after death men are very much aware of what's going on. 
the rich man's crying in pain. Lazarus is, is comforted. You know, Psalm 116 and verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Friends, I don't believe that refers to them slipping into a state of unconsciousness. That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I taught on this subject on one occasion, and a gentleman came to me afterwards, and he said, Don, that was a great lesson. He said, but you need to read this particular passage because you're wrong about there being consciousness in the Hadean realm. And he handed me a piece of paper. Well, I unfolded it, and I looked at it. It was Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5, where the Bible says, The dead know not anything. The dead know not anything. But you know, he was misinterpreting that verse because he so. was pulling it out of context. In fact, if you will look at the next verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 6 uses that phrase again, under the sun. Again, it's used in verse 3, it's used in verse 9, it's used in verse 13. And the context of this passage is things going on in this world, things under the sun, the things on this earth. And the point of the passage is that when you die and you go to paradise or torment, you are no in longer earth, aware of what's taking earth. place on this earth. Now, to prove that, in 2 Chronicles chapter 34, King Josiah was told by God that God was going to bring punishment upon Jerusalem for their sins, but that he was going to die and, and he was not going to see it happen. Now, once you to listen to the language in verse number 28. He said, Surely I will gather you unto your fathers. That is, you're going to die. You shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the calamity that I will bring on this place and its inhabitants. Now, what's the point? He will have died. He will have gone to the Hadean realm. So he was not going to see what was going to take place on this earth. The dead know not anything with regard to what's going on back here. Now, one final thing that I want you to notice about the Hadean realm. You notice that on the chart, that between paradise and torment, there's a green line, and it has the words, Great Gulf. That's because Luke 16, 26 says that there is a, a divide. There is a, a great gulf fixed, so that no one can pass from one side to the other. Once you are in paradise, you are there to stay until the Day of Judgment. Once you are there in torment, you are there to stay until the Day of Judgment. And so that means every person who has ever died unfaithful in the eyes of God is still there. Many have been there for thousands of years, some for minutes, some for seconds, but I think about Great them teaching. crying, I am tormented in this flame. But it doesn't end. Now, that takes us to the next section of this chart, which is the Resurrection Day. Okay. The Resurrection Day is what... This is where we pause and we pull down. I want it to, that's great teaching. Mm -hmm. great. Outstanding, awesome. The way uh, he explained it there. Mm -hmm. The the rich man, the poor man, the Hadean realm. This right. is what I was telling you about the translations. The different translations. Guess what? The key word here is the place you go before. So it's almost like a prejudge, mm -hmm. all right? The trapetite man is what we're made of. I encourage you to click on that. Uh, go to our YouTube channel and stroll down until you find that and you will understand what makes a man, a person, a human, right? A human, trapetite, right? Three parts, a spirit, a body, your soul. So your 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 spirit man, your spirit, which Yah gaveth, is going to return back to him. Your glorified part of you. Your soul, which carries your character, your personality, this and that and the other, things in your heart. That's what's being judged. And this is what's going to the Hadean realm. Your body back from the earth from which it comes. Worms and everything's going to eat that up. So now as we talk about the Hadean realm, that's the translation, but that's, it does not translate in this point as to being hell, but it's, if you think about it, 
is that step before hell. Because if you're in that place of torment where the rich man is in the flame, well, what's your next move? The lake of fire, mm -hmm. which is the second death. Right. And that's hell for eternal. In the eternal flame, Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. Different translation, but also means the same. You, you get what I'm saying here? That's why we put that little clip in there. Because I want you to, to, to understand that there's different translations, there are different names, there are different types, there are different insert hell in a different place and it'll mean something else. But still the same. If you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's still torment. It's right. Still torment. The Hayden realm. The Hayden realm is where people go when they die. It doesn't right. matter whether they're uh, righteous or unrighteous. They go to the Hayden realm. Mm -hmm. and then there's the gulf. And then mm -hmm. one is representing the paradise, which is mm -hmm. eight pounds bosom. Mm -hmm. The other is representing torment, mm -hmm. which is the hell. They mm -hmm. split the lake of fire or what you know the because I mean the Gehanna. next the next <laughs> place after judgment you, it's might as well you 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 could almost say this it's a prejudgment it's a prejudgment because, because once you get judged you go into that lake of fire the eternal the eternal place. oh man Ooh. can you imagine oh okay and you know this mm -hmm. why you already in torment you know you're going to a second torment after that that's even worse. Wow. You don't so you know, you know what I think of when 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 I'm I'm I want to complain. Mm. Or you know, if a person you know I want to do something wrong today, mm -mm. think about that borehole. 7.5 miles. Oh that's it. Dreams. wow. Yeah. That's where the Hadean realm starts. Mm. And they just so happen to tap into the torment side. It's probably quiet in Abraham's bosom. Yeah, peaceful. They probably picking grapes from vineyards, maybe down there. Who knows? I we mean, don't know. But they, because they, we're they, under the sun. We're under the sun. See, but that's what it means. The dead knows not nothing, meaning that they don't know what's going on on this earth. Wow, on the earth. On the earth, not underneath. Now it. they in it. Yeah, but they don't know what's going on under the sun, which is what the earth is on top. Wow. In other words, you could say they don't know what's going on up there on top. Right. Yeah, they don't know. Don't know. Because they're no longer amongst the living. I pray so this they know video. not nothing that's going on up here that's on right. top. Help under the sun. That says so, there's not right. hell. Well, there's why would you know it is it, moving forward, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I understand what that scripture means when it said the dead knows not nothing. Right. So get it. Understand it. And Absolutely. It. Number four, Tartarus. So we uh, he touched on that a little bit. Second Peter chapter two, mm -hmm. verse four. Second Peter chapter two, verse four, in KJV. Okay, you gotta get that. Tartarus. We can read it. Let's see here. Second Peter. I'm in Second Peter's. I'm in it. Um, Second Peter. Make a song. Second, Second Peter, Peter chapter two and four. four. Yeah. Uh, it's two and four. Two and four. Mm -hmm. All right. Second Peter. Two and verse four. Mm -hmm. Everybody ready? All right. For if Yah did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell. Mm -hmm. In this place, which in this translation, it means Tartarus. Mm -hmm. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Mm -hmm. All right? Tartarus, Tartarus is the deep abyss that is used as a dungeon of torment and suffering for the wicked and as a prison. It is located far below even Hades and is a dreaded place of darkness and punishment reserved for only the most nefarious sinners. The fallen angels were cast into Taurus, a place for final judgment, 
Altruism involves several limitations of actions symbolized by chains and almost total lack of understanding symbolized by darkness. And I believe here, let's go back to the NJ, NKJV for some extra commentary here. Go back to your study Bible if you have that. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the notes down here. Uh, as it is it as it explains the verse, uh, chapter two, verse four, the angels who sin. There are two main interpretations of this passage, depending on one's understanding of Genesis chapter six, verse one through six. Some think that Peter is referring to sons of God in Genesis six, verse two. According to this interpretation. The sons of God were angels who rebelled against God and their role in creation. They began to engage in forbidden practices with the daughters of men. Their outrageous conduct was met with immediate judgment. Mm -hmm. So this was the fallen angels. The angels were cast into hell or Hataris, a place of final punishment. Tartarus involves several limitations of actions symbolized by chains and almost total lack of understanding symbolized by darkness. A second group of commentators balk at the suggestion of sexual relationship between angels and women. They consider this verse to be simply a reference to those angels who fail with Satan. So this just if you can imagine, brothers and sisters, all right, we have 7.5 miles down from the top of the earth. According to the borehole, this is where the Hadean realm started. This is where they found the sounds. Now, the Hadean realm or hell is further than that. Another compartment of it where where final judgment for the angels. And this was total darkness. It's total darkness and things symbolizing no understanding. So it's dark, it's nothing you can see, and you're bound. These are the angels. And from my understanding, it's awful just reading it. And it was the punishment of the ones that fell with Satan as well. All right. So that's the translation of hell as Tartarus. All right. Below the Hadean realm. Hades. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what? Before you go on further, okay. it talks about like when you get down further, this is kind of helps. Okay. Happens. Go ahead and read. Now. It says that God did not spare the ancient world, but brought the flood on the world of the godless people. The only ones he saved were Noah, who preached righteousness, mm -hmm. and seven other people. God condemned the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, destroying them with fire, and made them an example of what will happen to the godless. Mm. You see mm -hmm. the purpose of why hell exists, the clip from Pastor John? Mm -hmm. Because humans start desiring of the things, mm -hmm. and they still do. Although we may not be feeling our very best, I'm still going to bring the message. Mm -hmm. Nabi is still going to sit right here in my right hand, my rib, and bring the message with me. You have to desire righteousness. Mm -hmm. Read that for us one more time there, Nabi. It says, God did not spare the ancient world, but brought the flood on the world of godless people. The only ones he saved was Noah, who preached righteousness, and seven other people. God condemned the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, destroying them with fire, and made them an example of what will happen to the godless. To the godless. So without Yah, you're not righteous. You're the, the wicked. That's what that Fire. Means. He brought that judgment on earth because couldn't take it no more. Mm -hmm. And I just want to read over to verse 14. It says, 
They want to look for nothing but the chance to commit adultery. Their appetites for sin is not is never satisfied. Mm -hmm. They led weak, weak people into a trap. Their hearts are trained to be greedy. They are under God's curse. They have left the straight path and have lost their way. They have followed the path taken by Balaam, son of Bor, who loved the money he, he would get for doing wrong. And as as you can see, he was rebuked for his sin. Mm -hmm. Wow. Perfect example, brothers and sisters. For those that say there's not a hell, it doesn't exist, it's not eternal, read your Bible. Read your Bible. First of all, pray. And ask the most, if it's a place, take me there. Let me see it. Mm, I don't know if you want to do that or not. Yeah, because some people have asked for examples. And they've been there. And they you know, had out-of-body experiences where the Lord allowed them to actually go to visit, have a tour of hell. They came Took back. Their soul right on there. Mm -hmm. They went out of body, uh, however it, they call it, and uh, took took them to experience like a tour to hell. So if you really, really want to do all of that, I don't want no tours in hell. Just to, you know, this word is good enough I, for me. I take what the Bible says. I say. take what the Lord the Most High says in His Word. This is good enough for me. Don't need a tour. No. Nope. So some people, you know, they want that tour. So yeah. Anyway, moving forward, brothers and sisters, we're about to wrap up this Bible study. So that was Tartarus. Uh, Revelation 9, verses 1 and 2, mm -hmm. the bottomless pit. G12. Listen up. Strong's G12. Abusas. 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 Ah, uh, bottomless, unbounded, the abyss, the pit, the unmeasurable depth. All right, the unmeasurable depth, the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, NKJV. 9 and 2 says, the star opened the abyss and smoke poured out of it like the smoke from a large furnace. The sunlight and the air were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. That's right. Now, uh, NKJV reads, uh, verses, uh, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened, dark, were darkness because of the smoke of the pit. So another translation, bottomless pit. Bottomless pit literally means the abyss, which means bottomless, unabound, the pit or unmeasurable death. Abusos. It's also a very deep gulf or chasm. The bottomless pit holds a unique type of demon. It is also the home of the beast which who makes war against the two witnesses. At the beginning of the millennial kingdom, the bottomless pit is the place where Satan is bound. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. Let's take a read here. Revelation 20. One through three. Mm -hmm. All right, read. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key of the abyss and a heavy chain. He sees the dragon, the ancient serpent, that is the devil or Satan, and chained him up for a thousand years. The third threw the, the, the angel threw his, him into the abyss, locked it, and sealed it so that he could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were over. After that, he must be set loose for a little while. So this is the place translated as hell, the bottomless pit, Abu Sos, Abyss, mm -hmm. where Satan is going to be bound during the millennial reign. Okay? Number... 
See what number we on here. Number six, last but exactly not least, the Lake of Fire. G4442. Strong's G4442. Poor. 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 Straight up and down. Fire. Poor. Now, let's take a look here. Revelation chapter 19, verse, verses 19 through 20 in KJV. One second here. 19 and 20. And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, those who worshipped his image. These two were cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So this is the final judgment, the final place, the final hell where you go. And as you can see, these were the two cast alive in the lake of fire burned with brimstone and also those who worship his image. So anything that's connected to unrighteous is connected to Satan. All of that. Go all the way back to where did we take that scripture from earlier? Uh, it was Matthew 25. No, no, it was the one after that. It was... Um, was it John? I uh, can't remember. I have to go back here. You know what? Let's take a minute and go back. Oh, Romans. Romans chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nabia. Romans chapter 1. Mm -hmm. So anything that's connected with Romans chapter 1, this is the final place, mm -hmm. the lake of fire. Hell, the lake of fire, and outer darkness are all terms describing the final destination of those who reject Christ. This is a state of complete separation from Yah, never ending and inescapable. According to the Bible, the lake of fire is the second death. The lake of fire would be a place of perpetual suffering and misery. Every person whose name is not in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Let's turn there physically. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Mm -hmm, right there. All right, read. It said, those who did not have their name written in the book of the living were thrown into the lake of fire. That's the final hell. Now, these were the six different names of hell. All right. We got number one, Sheol, the grave, also meaning hell. Hades, translating hell, the Hadean realm. Diana, pretty much a, a burning, a non-stop flame. Yeah, stinking burning flame. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> stinking burning flame. Right. Then number four, we got Tartarus. It's a place of chains and darkness and no understanding. Bottomless pit. Bottomless, abyss, other source, unabound, pit, unmeasurably deep. And then last but not least, number six, the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Here's the conclusion, brothers and sisters. Turn with me to Mark chapter nine. So we're going to wrap this up. Mark chapter 9, verses 44 through 49. Applying the precept in Mark 
9, chapter 44 through 49, means that we should take whatever drastic action is necessary to avoid sin. Obedience and self-control are necessary to overcome sin. Mm -hmm. We are living in the end times. Bible prophecy is fulfilling itself every day. Christ the Messiah is returning as a lion this time to judge the earth and inflict punishment on the wicked. So our prayer for you that are watching is that you repent and get right with your creator. Now let's read Mark chapter 9, verses 44 through 49. I'm going to pull it up here. You read it from there. Okay, Mark chapter 44. Let's see here. Mark chapter 9, verses 44 through 49. I'm going to pull it up physically here. Yeah. From, um... Chapter 9, verse 44 through 49. Mark, you got it? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm going to put it in the other Bible. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to pull it up out of the... Um... Mark chapter 9. Well, 44. Where? Okay, we can go ahead and read it from there. Okay. I'm going to pull it up physically here. Mark chapter 9. Bear with me there, brothers and sisters. I'm almost there. Verse 44 through 49. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start in 43. 43, yeah. All right? If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Mm -hmm. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter in life lame rather than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Verse 47. Mm -hmm. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of Yah with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Verse 49. For if every for everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Brothers and sisters, I thought this one all the way through. Mm -hmm. Mark, your eyes and your body parts, your hands, your feet, your mouth sometimes can be awful. And it can cause us to do things. We all feel the rags. We all have sin. We all have sin and come Lord. short. Brothers and sisters, remember the next time you sin willfully, 7.5 miles, they hit a cavern. They hit an opening inside the earth. And this what was there. Torments. Anything you want to add there? It just seems, you know, it, it seems that people think that it's harder to live righteous and it's more easy to live unrighteous. But it's hard living a life of sin. All the things you can get into, it's just, it's it's just a, a lot. So we need to think about that. Really think about it. And say, well, you know what? There's always opposition. You can be good. You can be bad. You can be up. You can be down. You can be rich. You can be poor. You know, it can be a male or female. So it's always opposition. Hell, heaven, God, devil. But I tell you, you don't want to go to hell. 
it's not worth it out of all the things on this earth. It's just not worth spending eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just go ahead, revise, take a look, look yourself in the mirror, think about this thing real hard and say, Lord, I know I've not done everything I should have done. I haven't done everything right. Repent, ask Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, to come and live in your hearts and turn and mm -hmm. decide in your mind, say, no, I'm not going to live like that no more. I'm not going to do those things that's displeasing to the Father, the Creator, because I want to serve Him. And don't make up these, these crazy ways of serving Him, like images and and sacrificing your children and you know like Ahab did mm -hmm. he was 20 years old with a young mind but he did some extraordinary crazy things awful so let's just do what is right in the eyes of the most high and repent of our sins accept Yahushua HaMashiach as our Lord and Savior and live right just do right That's it. so we can make it we can all make it we can do this so if you ask yourself for those callers or, you know, the emails and, and the questions. It's not, a, and you say there's not a hill. Mm. Well, I've, I've forced an opinion mm. to differ. There is. It is real and it is eternal. And I pray that this video, not where it's supposed to get, and it hit who it's supposed to hit. Nabi is going to take us out in prayer here. Mm -hmm. Father most high, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I come boldly before your throne of grace. And I pray for your people, Lord. I pray that those that have been tuned in listening, Father, I pray even for the saints that we will all come to the knowledge of truth, that we will understand truth, that we will depend on your wisdom because your word declares that yes. anyone who lacks wisdom, ask and you will freely give it unto thee. Father, I ask that you would dispatch your angels to help us. Lest we dash our foot against a stone. Your Holy Spirit to inspire us, to be our helper, to correct us, to convict us, so that we would know what is wrong and come back to you and repent and turn and accept your Lord, our Savior, the Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach. So, Father, I just pray that you do a quick work that those that are been seeking you, coming for you, that you would draw near to them, yeah. that you would deliver them, that you would set them free, you would save them, and you would give them a mind after you, a heart after you, Father, that they would know the ways of righteousness. And they would stay on that path, and they would not come off that path of righteousness for your name's sake. So, Father, I pray your Holy Spirit to come upon them to give them a way of righteousness, to lead them into the way of righteousness and keep them on that path. Father, give them understanding that there is a hell and that is not your desire for them to go there. So Father, I pray that you will save them, deliver them, give them understanding and draw them unto you. In the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for tuning in, brothers and sisters. I, I hope it's you know, it hit where it's supposed to hit and, yes. and Shemai, O Israel, oh, Yahuwah, Elohenu, Yahuwah is, is one. one. So if the water for tuning in, brothers and sisters, and Shalom. See you on the next one.